never fails. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the First Ones to Die podcast. Hello. We hope you're having a great day, morning, afternoon, night. Whenever you listen to this podcast, we hope it brings you joy, happiness, and love. Um, I am Jonathan. I am here with my co-hosts, Alex and Jerome. Alex, you gave me a face, so I have to go with you. What's the problem? I was to say, why'd you laugh? Like, you don't know that you're Jonathan. Like, you're like, am I Jonathan? No, the way he's, <laughs> no. I, I laugh because he's like, and love. And I'm like, who's giving this love here? I'm like, not me. <laughs> when they heart you? us, when they heart us on iTunes or Apple, by the way, that's a reminder. Give us a, a subscribe, <laughs> a like, a comment. Just going on immediately Apple. in. <laughs> Smooth transition. Uh, I'm good. I was just retelling a story about how I snapped at my coworkers. And now I wear color therapy glasses, green ones. The exact they called you team. Elton John. No, they called me Elton John after Fancy. I wore the glasses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I was wearing them. No, I yelled beforehand because they were all talking to me at once. And as I, I'm going to let everybody know what I said. I told them to get off my dicks, which is not an appropriate setting for a doctor's office. I'm going to say that right off the bat. And I did apologize afterwards. And then I was like, mm, I might be getting a little stressed at work now. So I should try a few things. I did say, I did say I was like, I feel embarrassed wearing them, but in, it's a small phone room we're all in. It's about six of us. Uh, another coworker pointed out that I wear mushroom slippers in there. So I didn't have much reason to be embarrassed about green glasses. They're like, you're already walking around in mushroom slippers around here. They're the, they're the plant from Super Mario. That's what they are. That's what my slippers are. So she's like, Green glasses aren't that bad, Alex. You'll be fine. I was like, all right, yeah, I am that weird person in the corner. And I call my little cubicle my hobbit hole anyway, so clearly there's not much I can do to be weirder. That's my story of the week. How about, how are you doing, Jerome? <laughs> Good. Okay. Chilling. Uh, saw Black Widow. Uh, be on the lookout for that review. Hitting the first ones to die on YouTube. You can find my review talking about Black Widow and whatnot. Uh, and also, uh, it's been a pretty okay uh, week. I've been teaching myself how to draw digitally on my Microsoft Surface. It's coming along. Moving from traditional, I'm like for those who don't know, I sketch all the time. Traditional art has always been my thing. That's how I learned. Never been good at doing digital art on like Wacom tablets or whatever. So this is my like, Fourier back into trying to do digital art for the second time and it is not as easy as it looks transitioning between the two so uh but i am dedicated to learning and and getting used to it and getting used to the undo process because that's really what it half of what digital art is is drawing lines and then undoing them and then drawing those same lines 50 times over so um but Nonetheless, uh, hopefully it'll just like be a new new art thing for me to challenge myself and push myself to do to the next step. And uh, so I'm excited for that. Nice, new creative ventures. I um, am almost finished with a creative venture. My um, class, we're having our showcase in two weeks. So I'm getting prepped for that. I've had that this week along with work and stuff. Um, and then tomorrow, I'm so excited because my dog Gibson, he starts his first day of training classes. Um, so he'll be a better dog. He's already good. He just needs a little refinement. When we go outside, he doesn't like to listen to me. He just likes to do his own thing. So um, hopefully- When he in front of people, he just like, see, you yeah, can't he, do he nothing to me to out here. Out. See? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> When we're in the house, like he, he'll he'll follow me around. He'll listen to anything I say. But the minute we step outside, it's like I'm free. So so hopefully we'll get that we'll get that refined. A lot of dogs are just genuinely like that because like my sister's dogs. Although she she did not train them, they're not trained. They like to book it. Um, but Winnie, who's a smoyed, I think I've seen showing her on the podcast uh she likes to just go she's super excited some dogs are just like that she'll just run away and then you just yell for her she comes back and being like oh what happened what's going on what did i do <laughs> so but gibson 
I don't know how pugs are. I've never actually been around a pug, so I don't know how well they train. Samoyeds are supposed to be really easy to, or really good at command. She's not. Um, but, from, uh, from my from my experience having Gibson so far, he's he uh, picks up on things very quickly, and that's what I've read that pugs do pick up things very quickly. Um, so hopefully, I can you know learn the techniques to help him to help him learn. I can learn to help him learn. So, um, and with that, something uh, that I learned today is that um, Sharknado is interesting. And that's uh, what we're gonna talk about today. So, <laughs> so for those who don't know, uh, Alex was the winner of Trivia Round uh, 3, what I'm calling Trivia the Trilogy. Uh, and uh, as trivia champ, that means she gets to pick the retro review that we do. And this time she chose. Why are you saying it's so defeated? I, I mean, Jerome. Because <laughs> I am. I am defeated. All right. Watching this movie was was a fight. All right. And I'm not talking like a normal fight. I'm talking to Oprah Winfrey. All my life I had to fight. Like that type of fight. Like the one that just leaves you black all, and tired. <laughs> okay. Rude. Rude. Sharknado is awesome. <laughs> so really quick, um, yes, I won trivia and I chose to, ch I chose the last Sharknado movie. Why? It's not like you need to watch the rest of them to understand the plot. Maybe the first one to figure out how the sharks got up there. I would argue you do because there were sometimes they were talking about characters and relationships. I was about I was to like, say, I was about to challenge Alex why on that. <laughs> Dude, dude, most of them were in there though. Other than like, you use some context, a little bit, yeah, of a little bit of context. <laughs> some of no, these. it was more fun this way, especially cause... because the beginning just assumes you've watched the last one. The the beginning of the movie literally just starts. It don't even bring you in. It don't give you no context. They don't even Not try to be like, card. hey, listen, they're like, traveling. This is, this is what happened last time. Now this time on this last Sharknado. No, they're just like- Last time on Sharknado. I have, I have seen Let all of I have seen all of them. <laughs> Trust me, you really don't need to know what happened in the last one to understand. Also, they're traveling through time. And they've met dinosaurs. They were like in foggy England style going on and there's a tornado of sharks. What do you think will help you from the last movie? What context do you think in any shape or form will be beneficial for you to understand what is going on better? How about why Tara Reed is a robot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a shark bit off her hand. There you go. There's your context. What do okay, you think, how about, how about How about the woman um, who got her head cut off that was in the bag? That's Tara Reed. Is that Tara Reed? Yes. Okay. She's a robot. She's that's a robot Tara. I'm not talking about normal Tara. She's fine. I'm talking she's, about Robo Tara who could shoot lasers out of her eyes. Okay, before we go any further, I did want to shout out because I saw that Alex posted on our um, Twitter page that um, about like leading up to us watching Sharknado and the writer of Sharknado actually commented under it. I don't know if you saw that, Alex. Oh no, I am. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Uh, he liked it. Like he said, he I, said, "All right, well, screw you." I'm super. I <laughs> like shut up. Let me have my moment. I'm super happy right now. What? Tell me what he said. The writer Thunder Levin. He he com he uh, tweeted under it um, or in response to it, saying, "Be on the lookout for a most excellent cameo in the bar scene at the end." Oh, was that him in the end? I didn't even know that. Wait. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so cool. I'm like super happy now. I don't, Jerome, leave, leave. leave. So he may be listening right now. So you're shout gonna, out. You're gonna, <laughs> Jerome's just gonna be rude and I know he's gonna be rude. So just leave. Cause like, I'm super happy now. Oh my God, that's Listen, so cool. Listen, he knows. He knows. <laughs> okay. Whatever. There's no way he don't. He knows. <laughs> he knows what he made. He I... knows what he's done. All right, this man's crying. You leave him alone. This is the type of man <laughs> who will shake somebody and then look at, and then bring the body with him to the police station to say he did it. Okay, you he leave him alone. Times. Alex is a super Thunder fan alone. of Sharknado, so if you are listening, Mr. Thunder Levin, and you want to send Alex some like free merch or something, 
then go ahead and send it to Alex because she deserves it. I and then literally... direct, direct direct all your comments towards Jerome. <laughs> no, the one, the Sharknado, oh, that I have to remember which one it is. When they went to Las Vegas uh, was the year I went to San Diego Comic-Con. It was the, it was actually Sharknado 4, The Force Awakens. Uh, they do love their puns, and that's another reason I'm a big fan. We were in San Diego, and we were just going on the outside of the Comic-Con. And there were people promoting Sharknado, people on stilts, a guy, an Elvis guy just was a shark. I literally, because they were handing out like stuff and it was me and my sister. I literally ditched my sister so that I could chase them. So I could get like free stickers and hats and stuff. By the time my sister actually found me, her and her friends, I had a foam shark hat on my head. I had like blue beads going on and I was like decked out in blue all of a sudden. And she's like, what did you do? I'm like, I found them. I found the Sharknado people. I am so excited. I did. That is so great. I'm so happy now. I don't want to hear Jerome's comments. He's going to be. I know he is. I'm too happy right now. Let's start with Jonathan. Yes. Okay. So, ba so basically, if you don't know how our reviews work, we go through um, basically our overarching thoughts of the movie. I mean, we've already spoiled a few things, but yeah. We did. We did. We did. <laughs> Um, and then afterwards, we'll transition into the spoiler sections where we'll go, wh where we will go more in depth into the film, and of course, talk spoilers. So, who? I feel like I want to hear Jerome's thoughts first. No, I mean, I we've hear, already. I, I'm flying high right now, so like Jonathan, you go first because you're a nice, <laughs> you're a nice person. Jerome. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll sugarcoat my. I my love critiques. you, Jerome, but I know what I know who you are as a person. <laughs> We all know who you are as a person, especially when it comes to reviews. So, Jonathan, uh, yeah. you go first. You know, I, going into it, I obviously knew that it was going to be very cheesy, very campy, very Sharknado-y. You know, it's this big pop culture thing, Sharknado, when it first came out, like the first one, when the first one first came out, everyone was all like, oh my gosh, what is this? This is so bad that it became so good and like a, a cult classic. And I had not seen any of the Sharknados. This was my first time watching any of the Sharknado movies. And I had a pleasant time. <laughs> I um, obviously, I wasn't watching it for, I wasn't, I'm not gonna critique the acting. I'm not gonna critique the plot, but I was surprised that they actually did have more plot than I was expecting. I thought the whole thing was just gonna be like, okay, we chainsawing sharks. And that was most of it. But I was happily surprised that they added a little bit of character stuff in there. Granted, I didn't really know. I was confused about the character stuff because I didn't really have some of that backstory. But um, it was what I expected and maybe, maybe um, a little more... Um, the main thing that I was surprised about was all the cameos. There are so many dang cameos in this movie. If you just go to the like pay the IMDb or Wikipedia page, all the people who were in this movie, it's like every single like star from every single I feel like most of the stars from um the 70s to like the early 2000s are in this movie. What was great about Sharknado 5 is Charo was uh, Queen of England. I really should guys have you guys watch Really, that. really. Yeah, you, see, you guys should just watch the whole series to see the cameos in general. They're great. Frankie Muniz was in one. Oh, uh, was he? Yeah. Fabio was in another. See, see I was... One, okay, I, I'll get into this in the spoiler section. But anyway, uh, Jerome, what were your thoughts? Uh, going into this movie, I already knew what I was getting into. You know, this is Sharknado. I know the stories. I've never seen a Sharknado movie. Um, so it wasn't like I was looking for like high grade cinema or anything <laughs> like that going into this film. I didn't go into it with that attitude. Um, however, uh, in the spirit of looking into like a movie where it's like it's a so bad it's good type movie i feel like there is 
a weird line and it's so strange. There is a line where it's your movie's bad because, but not because it's intentionally bad, just because like you put a lot of passion into it, but you didn't have the money or maybe you didn't have the acting <laughs> cast or you didn't have, you know, stuff like The Room where it's like that movie was made with a man who had passion. He's like, dang it, I'm making a movie. And it's like, okay, what about the story? Huh? What about the characters? Huh? <laughs> you didn't think about that stuff? Look, I'm making a movie. And that's that's all he did. And he's made one of the most like, you know, cult classic films ever since then. Sharknado 1 was that, where it's like, we got passion. Screw it, man. Screw the balls to the wall. We're just doing things. And we're making a movie. And I'm like, I can respect that. That's cool. This movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were done. <laughs> this movie is like is is over that line. Like Sharknado One hit that line and hit it perfectly. It's why it's so beloved and people really enjoy Sharknado. It's the like this one. The last one is clearly them trying to act like they are into like they didn't mean to make it the way it is, or rather. The best way to explain it is this movie should be titled Drunk Text to All of Your Actor Friends You Can Get at a Moment's Notice. Why do you say that? That's like a, a bad thing, though. That's not a bad thing. It sure. is a bad thing because I went to film school. I've seen movies made this way <laughs> before. And those are the ones the stories. This is like, hey. Yeah, the best stories for the people who were there. It is not the best story for the people who watch nothing but the end results. <laughs> like that's that's the only context they have for it. <laughs> they, exactly. they, all right, go first. <laughs> I'm just saying, this movie. I think the problem with this movie is that it tries too hard to be bad. Like it's trying too hard to be like, man, look how stupid these effects are. Look at these random characters. Don't make sense why they're here. Is that funny? Ho ho ho. And it's like. All right, now you're trying too hard to pretend to be bad because you have the money and know how to make a better film. <laughs> and it, I have to admit obvious. though that the effects, the effects were better than some of those Walking Dead effects, especially when that lion came in or the tiger came into the mix. <laughs> oh my god, that tiger! Yeah. No, it's really? not. And I just come from someone who's analyzed CG. No, it's not. Okay, but here's the thing. They have kept their level of quality throughout the years. Maybe you should watch the other ones because they kept it the same. You're just used to once a movie gets more money, their budget gets bigger and blah, blah, blah. But then it also is just like, you see all the CGI and you're like, oh yeah, they did this because their budget got bigger. It wasn't necessary. They had the money. He no, kept it to I'm the level. Saying, I'm saying you can't, lightning doesn't strike twice with these type of movies. They don't, they never have. It's why Tommy Wiseau's film, After the Room, isn't as good because he's trying to be bad. Was That's it why room, Birdemic Two? Was it Room never, Two, the hallway? No, it was a room. It was some other weird movie. Um, that's not as good. Yeah, then but it you was have, a different then you have movie. Birdemic Two. Birdemic Two, not nearly as funny as the first one because the first one they were just they were taking it dead serious. Like we are trying to make a movie. And we don't have the money to really do a lot of the stuff we want to do. So we're just going to try it like our best and just put some stuff together. Birdemic 2, they're trying to be bad. And so it doesn't work because you're clearly like, you're just doing what your, your, your front, you know, what makes some of the best stuff. And, and Jonathan, you could probably speak to this being an actor, is that some of the best stuff that comes out of creativity is the stuff that's very unintentional. Like, you, it's just stuff that just comes to the front of the mind at the moment, and then you just do it. Not the stuff you spend hours upon hours trying to figure out how to make it seem like it came at the last minute. And that's what this movie feels like. It feels like them trying way too hard to make it just as, uh, you know, hokey and cheesy and campy as the first one, but it doesn't work because you're trying. What made Sharknado fun, the first one, is that they weren't trying. They just were making a movie and having fun and whatever. I think... Alex, I'd like to hear your thoughts on... on I have more thoughts on, on what Jerome in the movie, because <laughs> I loved it. 
I enjoy it. It brought in time travel. As you know, and as we discussed, I'm a huge time traveling nerd. I start reading books on quantum physics. Why? It's time travel. And I think you just don't know how to calm the fuck down, Jerome, and enjoy a film anymore. <laughs> Sometimes some of the best movies, like they have kept their st steady level of what it looks like throughout the years though. So it's not like it's something like they look like they're trying, to me it doesn't look like they're necessarily trying as hard as you think they are to be bad. It literally looks the same as all the other films. That quality, that level of like shitty CGI is still there. And that's what makes the Sharknado movies like just so much fun. They're not trying to be more impressive than they think they are. A lot of the like movies and sequels you'll see of like movies that were cult classics that were just crappy and then came out with their with their um, sequels. The sequels are definitely trying harder. You see that they got the bigger budget, they're trying more, the animation, CGI, things have gone up, but the writing wasn't there, still a bad movie. And it was like, you didn't need to make this, leave that movie alone. We were just talking about that with Cruella. Cruella, very good movie, love it. They're already talking about making the 100, the 101 Dalmatians. I don't Afterwards. know if they call it that. I think it's just going to be Corella too. Just right. Like but the point is, that's a good Maleficent, movie. Whatever. And they saw how much people loved it. And now they're definitely got the, probably the bigger budget. They're going to try to do more. Focus more. No, leave that film alone. Sharknado say they have kept their quality. And the best thing about Sharknado, it is just a fun movie. If you allow yourself to enjoy it. You're, you're talking about enjoy. visual. I'm talking about visuals. I'm talking about the script. <laughs> <laughs> like I, well, maybe that's where visually, I, maybe yeah, that's where I should have picked like the first or second one because the script is still the same. Where they have these insane characters brought in out of nowhere, where you're just like, why though? But I love it. It fits. Mm -hmm. It's a nonsense movie, but it, I believe it works so well, and I enjoy it so much. And of course, it has sharks. I love sharks. I have a one tattooed on me. <laughs> so I love my movie. You need to have, you need to loosen up, Jerome. No. That's all I say for Dale. That's all I say for you. No, it's when you make an awful movie, but then make millions upon millions of dollars off of it. You don't just then keep making the same bad movie. You take that money and actually do what you want to do with it, <laughs> which is like- Why though? Stop. You can You can do that and you can make a different movie to what you want. But you can continue the same bad movies because people enjoy it. I enjoy it. I Why? even, wa I even watched their, their other one, La Valanchula. Okay, look, let me do ask you think this. Those, look, look, do you think those, those, um, those stars in The Kissing Booth on Netflix, do you think they want to be making two, The Kissing Booth 2, 3, and 4, and 5, and 6? Or do you think they'd rather just get on with their lives? Right, that's what I'm saying. You think that, you, you know why Thunder Lemon ain't been anywhere but sci-fi? <laughs> the sci-fi channel? And yet it, it keeps was that... making these. And then it's been a, like Comic-Con. It's been recognized everywhere. I mean, they have different characters, but they bring them to different locations. It's a different storyline every time, at least. Unlike like the kissing the booth metal, and like Alex. I expect there to be different story every time. Yeah, but you don't get it, do you? That's the thing with like movies and trilogies yes, and stuff. You do. It's not. No, it's not. Also, in a movie called Sharknado, where they destroyed it, you would think that's the end. There will be no more. And this movie's like every Sharknado movie is like, nah, bruh, it's Sharknado, but bigger. Sharknado in time. Sharknado, but this time on a different coast. Shark, yeah. it's, like, it's the same because thing. Because the sharks it's are not still a different up there. Story. All they gotta, all they're doing is taking down. Well, to be, to be fair, to be fair, you could say you can say some. Of, I'm not. I didn't say this. This didn't come out of my mouth. But hey. you could say that about Marvel sometimes. Oh, they I make do. the same movie That's over and over again. Too is that they keep making the same movie a lot of the time, especially it with their like kids. Star Wars too. For movie that's supposed to be taken down like the empire of the bad guys they are really shitty at that 
Oh, don't they get me started taken, with Star Wars. They have taken oh, down no bad guys. Don't in get me started with Star Wars. The other so bad guys. That star they put in the new, this is the new series movies. And the first thing you think to do for the big bad, where's their base at? Oh, it's this big or yeah. like base so, that destroys So planet. wait, no. I mean, like think about that. No, but bigger. Think about that. Sharknado has kept its level of quality in like the CGI form and everything. They are aware where they are. Star Wars. It's supposed to be higher quality, everything like that. They didn't do anything. Nothing oh, it changed. is higher quality in every way. It's, it's just bad. in the in the plot department. That's the one thing they have in common. Well, is it the plot the past department? That, past that, that they're apparently leagues above Shark. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but didn't you expect the plot to be different? There's supposed to be a change in the storyline <laughs> no, every right. time there's a new sequel. <laughs> But no, you the problem, said that was the bare minimum, right? That's that is what the bare suspected. minimum. The point is, that is that Alex, I appreciated that mocking voice. I've never <laughs> heard you use that voice before. Don't come for my Sharknado like that. Listen, what I'm telling is, is that Sharknado, all right? Sharknado, this movie specifically, because the first one, I don't really have any issues with the first one. The first one is what it is. It is, it is a cult classic movie that, for all intents and purposes, had no right making as much money as it did or being as popular as it did. But I'll, I'll give him some. Res- I'll give him some respect. I'll give him some respect that they made a movie that, on its level of ridiculousness and nonsense and just having fun with the plot, people really gravitated towards it. And I have no disrespect towards that. That's oh. cool. And that's what's that. And then that's what's up. You know, I love. I do love seeing a. a, a filmmaker who starts from a, a place whether they have low budget to no budget and make something and it, it takes off whether it be something super high class and super you know high grade great acting whatever or it be something nonsensical and just off the walls as long as it's just like somebody who started from nothing and now has something because they made something that's really cool and that's really neat. So first Sharknado, I have no problems with. It's just the fact of how many he made. <laughs> that's the issue. Because it's like, all right, now you're just doing this on purpose. And people keep giving you money because they think you're just going to keep getting like crazier and crazier with it. But there's a certain point, And you know who's learning this lesson now? The writers of Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious 9 has so far gotten the most rocky reviews of any Fast and Furious movie. You know why? Because they've now hit the point, they've hit that line, where now they are going way too far to the point where it's like, oh, let me get this straight. Aren't you just a mechanic? Yeah, how does this become a rocket scientist? It just does, whatever. It's like, okay, now you've lost me. And you've lost, and they're losing fans now. And Sharknado is the same way and it's like you started out really well with a pretty you know yes a nonsensical plot that does not make a whole lot of sense but in the world that sharknado was setting up it seemed somewhat plausible now you just hit a point at the once you hit the last one which is what we're reviewing for those who aren't, aren't sure once you hit the last sharknado <laughs> they've heard you like, yelling they know exactly what we're they've reviewing. hit a point you hit a point where things don't make sense because it doesn't feel like anything's tied together. I feel like I watched a bunch of short films that take place in the Sharknado universe tied together in different films through the excuse of time travel. But the reality is, is that it's literally, he wrote five pages, went to sleep for a month, then came back, forgot what he wrote, and then wrote another five pages. <laughs> is, is That's how it feels. Cause it's just stuff just happens. Just oh, stuff. I'm good. All I'm going to say is that, yo, Loki, Sharknado did it before Avengers. Because <laughs> if you recall, Endgame. Did what before Avengers? Time traveling. Endgame, yes. They, Loki, had the same plot. They were trying to go back in time so they could stop um, all this madness and Thanos and everything. And they had to go back in time. And it's like the complications with that. So Honestly, I think with the Avengers, okay, Jonathan, all they, uh, and that, Avengers, by that logic, the Back Avengers, in the Future uh, did it before Sharknado. So what you trying to say? <laughs> I watched Back to the Future. That movie is got some. <laughs> also, it is a little the, weird, admittedly. It gets a little it, weird. It's it it a, a little weird. It's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> um, rewatching it, I got a little uncomfortable. 
uh, with the Avengers 2, all they had to do is destroy one Infinity Stone. Just one. You can't destroy Infinity Stones, or at least and they yeah, don't have and, the power and to. And in Loki, they had a drawer full of them. That's the TVA. They're not the same. They're not even people. <laughs> they're, they're not they're even people. They're a force. <laughs> They're outside of time. And even then, they didn't destroy them. As soon as they bring any of those into the real world and outside of that realm, they are just as powerful as they were before. So realistically, they're just in a waiting pool until they get put somewhere else. That you can't destroy Infinity Stones. That's not how that works. Well, that's not true. Wanda did. But to be fair, her power comes from an Infinity Stone. So she's the exception to the rule. Everybody else, though, no one else could destroy an infinity stone. So she could have done it. She did do it. And Thanos undid it and killed Vision. <laughs> so, so it don't killed, really she matter. She could have destroyed any other one though. I, I, yeah, they're very unclear about that. As if she could destroy, well, also she wasn't around any of the other ones. The only one she had in her disposal was Vision's Mind Stone. That was it. So no, didn't she didn't get a chance to try and destroy any of the others because Everybody well, else. I meant with the time it. traveling, they could have brought one to her and been like, hey, can you just destroy this for us? No, she was ashes. She was dead. She she got dusted, just like everybody else. Before Thanos snapped his finger, because they have the power of time travel. You know how far you go, after you go? Sharknado proved that they went to the Wild West and dinosaur time. Okay, so but that doesn't solve, stop. wait, but that doesn't solve the problem of bringing back everyone who got dusted. That just solves the problem of stopping Thanos from doing it at all. I mean, Thanos was not wrong. The world's kind of overpopulated. Just make more resources then. <laughs> Humans aren't smart enough to do that. That's why we're in the problems we are in this day and age. But he's an alien. He ain't human. That's exactly it. He should think about these things, all right? He's from a different planet. He don't think okay. like we do. That's we're going off intelligent life. All right, back to Sharknado. What did you guys think of Neil deGrasse Tyson? Okay, so <laughs> I... You know, funny enough, as much as I want to say this is a waste of that man's talents, I'm not going to lie. This is where this is where he's at these days. You know, I don't expect anything different from him. <laughs> I don't know why. I just don't. <laughs> when I like, first what is heard... he using that physics degree for? To be in Sharknado. <laughs> he's also when, they were, when they were talking about Merlin and they were like, oh, Merlin, Merlin's coming. I, I don't know why, but I was like, oh, this is about to be a black man. And then I turned and looked and I saw that it was Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that it was going to be this black man. I, it was a pleasant surprise. The medieval part, part was already just, I was like, I mean, I saw it through most of it, but the, the, the medieval part was a special one just because it's like, for some reason, like, again, this is what I mean when I say it feels like he just drunk dialed all of his friends to be in a movie. Because it's like the main evil witch lady is a drag queen why because that's just and There's, i was like they got better attitude than everybody okay, oh by the way we're moving into spoiler territory isn't it that yeah, in the medieval if that, if times that wasn't, if, if that that you were a true. drag queen you'd probably be stoned and that's on a good day that's 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 if like they like you you gonna get stoned <laughs> if they don't like i don't know you, if you Nato is going into the semantics the of of, of I don't know Sharknado is oh, going. You think they're the not semantics. going to the semantics of that, but they're going into the semantics of you can't talk to your grandfather or else you might affect time, and then we won't ever, you know. Yeah, because that's not the actual paradox we were talking about. The grandfather. If you paradox. care about physics, you care about drag queens getting stoned in the medieval times. You know who else would be stoned in medieval times? Us. So that was also an issue. Did they letting black people talk? They, they, they wouldn't let them get a word in, let alone be the I, one to actually figure Bridgerton. stuff out. Okay, things can happen. That's okay. Victorian. That's different. That's a different era. <laughs> that happens afterwards. Actually, med medieval, medieval times, um, for, for black people, you guys existed there. I'm not you saying we didn't exist. I'm just you saying we didn't get no respect back then either. <laughs> actually, it was quoted that uh, they thought uh, Queen Guinevere, King Arthur's wife, was actually... Supposedly, you could with black. Hmm. She noted that in like so many media's, and I was reading something. It was actually believed that she had darker skin. That's one of the reasons he fell for her. Cool. So, so all I'm saying, saying is, queen. I will I'm say though, is to suspend, that uh, I don't suspend know. disbelief. Okay, 
for an hour and a half. Also, I love that home dude turns into a black woman who, by the way, I love that actress. I can't remember her name right now, but she's in Wolfenstein 2. She's also in uh, Jedi Fallen Order. She's awesome. I think she was also but, on an episode of That's So Raven back in the day. But anyways, go ahead. Probably. Um, but anyway, uh, she's fantastic. However, I love that she he turns into her for no reason. And then I was like, okay, maybe this is going to be a thing. You know, this is going to be a bit where like every time he he time travels, like he's going to be a different cameo or something like that. No, he's just himself for the rest of the movie. So that tells me they couldn't get him for that week to come in and film. <laughs> so they had to just get some other random lady to come in and fill his role and do all of his lines. <laughs> You're really stuck on the medieval time. <laughs> it uh, was the start, know. and already it was just like, oh, so this this is what we doing, huh? Like I said, it was a fight to get through the rest of this after that. Really? I would have thought the fact that they went after a shark on a pterodactyl would have been the thing that got I was already, I was already like, all right, we're doing dinosaurs. Okay. Because they went back in time. In That's it. where you start. I'm again like jonathan said it would have been nice to have some context that they just we're in time now i'm like okay wait a minute are did dinosaurs take over the world is this a sequel to jurassic world 2 where dinosaurs you there was time travel <laughs> if, if there is time travel would you not have assumed no 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 alex time, time travel is in the title they don't even tell you they're time traveling until like a, after 15 I minutes know. of watching the film that's Warned the you first guys. 10 pages you had context like, going in it's about time travel, which I said you can go back, and I will go back. Okay, I would Alex, actually didn't exist. I would actually Someone post would this not part. know that if they were just getting into this. They need you need that other movie before this. I'm sorry, you can I say mean, what you want, but you need that context. <laughs> I gave it. I gave you both context. Um, Jonathan, because you're just yes. watching us yell at each other. What was your favorite time period? <laughs> <laughs> Um, my favorite time period, I would probably have to say, I really liked the 90s because um, one of my favorite jokes from that came and that was uh, when Tori Spelling said, did we go to high school together? And um, Ian Ziering said, um, no, I would have remembered that because obviously they were both on Beverly Hills 90210 and they went to high school together. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, I will say there was a lot of those like little moments in there where mm -hmm. it was like, unless you're a bit older, you're not going to get it. So it was like, I, or if you know shows a little more, like I was like, oh, and then I was like, oh, I feel old. I know this is, I know, I understand the joke they're doing. Um, Admittedly, the Wild West was my favorite, but mostly just because of D. Snyder. Where I was you like, yeah, like, actually, yo, I was that D. Snyder from Twisted, Twisted Sister, that's awesome. You so would funny, like the Wild West so, section. So funny story about D. Snyder. Um, when I, me and my parents went to Toronto like four years ago, D. Snyder, it was during the holidays and D. Snyder was performing at this like Christmas thing at the hotel we were staying at. And I got to see them rehearse. I was like 20 feet away from him. And it was it was cool. Him and Taylor Dane, which I didn't know who Taylor Dane was at the time, but like my parents knew who she was, um, but now I do. And yeah, she was a little bit before my time. But anyways, I knew who D. Snyder was. D. Snyder was. And he was actually like, I was actually impressed with his he acting in this movie. He was pretty decent <laughs> action. I was impressed. I was like, man, D. Snyder out here, actually, he, he giving them way too much of his acting talent for this. This should, he know what movie he in? You gotta pull uh, back the rudeness. Calm down. Uh, no, nah, that was just me just being mean for the sake of being mean. No, but for real though, D. Snyder was really good actually. The Wild West period, I feel like, was the was the one I was like, all right, this one's like pulling me back in a little bit. Um, uh, between D. Snyder, like, yes, it was still ridiculous, After but it felt like it was like it was getting back in back in gear. We were getting back on track a little bit. Um, but it seemed really cool. I liked D. Snyder. I liked uh. I, you know what it also probably was? It was also because that's when Vivica Fox shows up. <laughs> so <I was> just like, <laughs> so at that point I was like, oh, thank God, Vivica. I've been waiting for you ever since I saw your name in the opening, <laughs> opening credits. I, know. <laughs> I was like, Vivica <laughs> A. Fox is in this? That was my thank reaction God. too. I didn't know she was in it. I didn't know she was in it either. That was a legit surprise. I was like, Vivica A. Fox? Again, what are you doing here? <laughs> But she was great, actually. She like you could tell she's having a good time and having fun. Um, I mean, really, you could tell all the actors are having a good time. 
and having fun, except Tara Reed. But I don't think that's Tara Reed that she's not having fun. I think it's just T- Tara Reed is as as an actress has gotten worse and worse over the years since American Pie. And here she just she she only, at least the other ones they know it's ridiculous. They know it's hokey, but they're still gonna try and like ham it up a little bit, which is you know adds to the humor and adds to the fun of the movie. Tara Reid, you don't just get you just get nothing from her. She might as well be reading her lines while eating a slice of pizza off the box, like because she because she's just she's just blank the whole movie, and it's so weird because I'm like everybody else. Yes, you're one of the like mainstays, like everybody else. But at least they're trying a little bit, you know, to be a little hokey, a little funny, you know, or, or even be over dramatic. They're giving me something. Get nothing from Tara. It was weird. I was like, because she's been in all of them. <laughs> so I'm like, it's not like you don't know what you what you here for. I mean, technically, Look, Tara Reed said, robot. I'm here for a check, and you're going to have to accept that, Jerome, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, though. When she's not Robot Tara, she still is Robot Tara. It's weird. It's so weird. She has to like, be one face, so you don't know which one's Robot Tara until she's <laughs> shooting lasers out of her eyes. I enjoyed that. I did enjoy the 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 laser the laser eyes. What was your favorite time period, Alex? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm following everything you guys said to me. Um. <laughs> I kind of like the Revolutionary War part, just because that was funny. It was very like one of those moments where I could. It was like America style, <laughs> and that part I felt like ridiculous. That part felt a little more ridiculous than the other parts. Weirdly enough, um, so just, I have to. Oh, play, it's always I have to ask Benjamin you. Franklin and George Washington. They never get any of the other founding fathers. When I watch movies with time travel and stuff, you get Hamilton. Them too. A little Hamilton, yeah, a little bit. mostly just so they can make they Hamilton reference, jokes, and then <laughs> yeah, yeah, they well, reference Hamilton like the musical as well. So like, um, I have to ask for clarification on something. So, did Homegirl <laughs> really want to stay in that time period so she could help her great great whatever grandfather and not help the world? from becoming engulfed in this Sharknado nonsense. Is that what she wanted to do? It's that whole- I, So in, in, in that sense, I was on, um, uh, what's, if I was on Finn's side. I was on Finn's side. I took his side because I'm like, yeah, what are you, you're gonna stay here and you're gonna be selfish because you wanna spend time with your, your great, great, whatever grandfather. And like, that's not, but, but, but we have all this at stake. That annoys me about people in movies and stuff when we have all this stuff going on, but they're like, oh no. I." So here's the thing, and I always have held on to this because it's been so long and it's an old Tumblr post. I saw this thing back like way back freshman year of high school, freshman year of high school, freshman year of college, God, I feel old. And I've always held on to this. Um, and it said, as a reminder, a hero will sacrifice you to save the world but a villain will sacrifice the world to save you. And I kind of like that sentiment. I don't want to die anymore. Um, Sorry, mom. Uh, And I always think about that when I see characters like that, but it's like, no, you feel more villainous. And also, but then again, there's like a bunch of them. They can save the world. They don't need her exactly. Okay, you act like any of them are competent. Like, Finn, <laughs> except Finn, Finn is the only competent one of the group. <laughs> Everyone else is useless. Except Vivica Finn. Fox. She was actually pretty, she pretty decent. And Robo Terra, like the head with the eye, with the See, laser. See, so eye. that's three. She was useful. Three okay, Robo Terra needs a person to hold her up. And Vivica Fox wasn't around at this time. So it's <laughs> like, so I don't know. Like, ditched her and been like, then, then they would have been fine. You can always find people to fight sharks. You can just go to Florida, <laughs> you'll find a bunch of people. 
because they've had a bunch of people these movies been on the crew so See? that's actually true they can't find just any bold any just old go body to florida to you'll find a bunch of people willing to jump in the water yeah, and fight just sharks. in this movie they find a bunch of people who are like oh i got this i'm just gonna start shooting the sharks out the air blam 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 and they're just like jerome jerome <laughs> i want you to look me in the eye and tell me <laughs> you wouldn't be one of those people what to survive yes <laughs> So then that's what it is. They could find a bunch of people who want to survive. No, there are people that wanted to hide and get away and be like, no, this is not our fight. You're telling me that you wouldn't be one of those people next to Finn with like a machine gun shooting at the sky for the sharks. If I don't have a choice, yes. But if I do, I'm sorry, dog, you got this. I, it's like, I'm not trained I, to fight weather and aquatic and life that have merged together to create an ultimate death machine. Please, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, that's outside of my that? realm. That's outside hold of my on, purview. Hold on, you say that, but when we chose, when we picked the worlds of where we wanted to be in, you were the only one who wanted to play hero, go off and help the little hybrids. So, okay, mm -hmm. see, here's the thing though. You haven't seen the Sweet Tooth show. There's a character in that show. She basically just runs a hybrid daycare. Okay, she just has the kids come there where she can just like help them grow up, teach them how to read books, you know, the, 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 the simple life, all right? She doesn't really have to shoot much of anybody. I mean, she does at the end of the season, but the point is, it's just, you know, there's possibilities. And why didn't chill. you, why didn't you mimic that character? Why did you mimic the one with the gun and the knife because and I the bloody you. hand? You, you know, know who you are. Okay, you, you know who you are. You're, you're American. Not, you're an you're American. Not. You're an American. Even you know that statement. It's, not, it's still the post apocalypse. You still need to bust a cabin raised, somebody every now and again. See, you were born and raised in South Carolina. You really try right, to be so like, oh, you What did you guys think of Al Roker? What, Al Roker what do you mean? Like, as opposed to what? Any <laughs> other movie? All they did was take a clip from CNN and put it on the end of this movie. The Today Show. Whatever. The point is, is that it's he, he ain't did nothing but what he normally does. Actually, save the weather. Also, I'm home. looking at the list right now, and I didn't realize Latoya Jackson was Cleopatra. Yeah, I, I I caught that on the Amazon like cast list. I was like, oh, Latoya Jackson is Cleopatra. See, she ain't the uh, Janet and Michael ain't the only ones who are talented. Toya too. She's in Sharknado. That's I just like that they actually got, I mean, you got to give it credit. They actually picked a black person to play an Egyptian. Well, Cleopatra true. is normally, yeah, that's true. She's, she's depicted as white. Well, she's depicted as white because of uh, that one movie. Cleopatra? With, yeah. Mm. With, uh, what was her name? Uh, I forget her name. And it's a film classic. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And ever since then, she was more depicted as a, a white female when, Wow, she's African. Yeah, but we've already, the, you know, science has already made it where it's like whoever plays Cleopatra next has to be black because, <laughs> like, in Hollywood, oh, yeah. they've been trying, they were trying to do a Cleopatra movie forever. Didn't she since. marry her son? I think I don't, I don't remember. Elizabeth Taylor, I'm on, by the way, I'm on that's her who played Cleopatra. Cleopatra, Cleopatra. I think she married her son. Anyway. Oh, oh right, no, yeah, that no, that's a problem, <laughs> right? I forgot. Gal Gadot is supposed to be in lines to play Cleopatra. In oh, Cleopatra why? Film. Because oh. she's the new exotic girl. Like she's the only one who's the most famous exotic woman right now. I love how Hollywood finds one dark, dark skin dish person. Cause she's got the olive skin. She's dark, but she's not that dark. I'm dark. She's not her. that dark though. Like, that's why I said I'm darker. I'm darker than her. Right now I'm pink because of my lighting. Like right now I'm like a nice <laughs> pink red going on. That also might just be from anger from Jerome yelling at my movie. Listen, this is revenge for smoking in the bandit. Right. <laughs> smoking in the bandit, still stupid. The only good thing I about swear, that was I swear their you car. guys. I swear you first mentioned that on the podcast maybe over a year ago, and I had he... no idea what it was. And have you watched it? No. You'll, that's not your own problem. You need to watch it. Watch Smokey and the Bandit and you tell us which was How worse. I get dragged into this mess. You keep trying to bring it back, so we are bringing it now back to you. You need to watch Smokey and the Bandit 
and then compare it to Sharknado and see which one's worse. Yeah, the movie with a plot against this movie that has this no plot. This movie has a plot. They're trying to Jerome. stop the shark. Okay, okay, no, no, no. Jerome, next time you win trivia. No, no, no. And they found people to fight. No, no, Jonathan. Why are we all talking at the same time? Let me, let me ask Alex this. Time. If it has a plot, explain it to me in a sentence, Alex. Explain to me the plot of this movie in a sentence. <laughs> They travel through time to stop Sharknados. Boom. Because it has been affected now through time. So they're trying to make sure everything is set straight so that they can finally just go home and be a family. It has AKA more plot than- Avengers Endgame. See, that's under the Wikipedia page. I need to put <laughs> You keep trying to make that connection work. Honestly, I'm sorry, no. Jonathan, it's very flimsy. No, 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 wait, wait. Actually, he's got a point. You because can't say that because you ain't watched it. <laughs> I've seen enough. Oh, yeah, there's that's the right. whole point. Wait, let me, there's let me actually, no, no, wait, talk. wait. First off, watch for yourself, Jonathan. <laughs> Secondly, there is, that, me. there is literally parts where they're traveling through time and they get like a whole gang of the people from that period of time to fart their Sharknados. The same with the Avengers. They get people from those different times come through that little portal to fight Thanos. No, they don't. That's what I'm saying. You haven't seen the movie. They don't I get don't people from time. that time period. Everyone is from the present time <laughs> going back in time to solve a problem. Everyone is on the same page. It's not, we ended up in New York. <laughs> now we got to get this random person to come with us to go solve the next problem in the next No, time you know what happened? They ended up on weird different planets like Tony and they all ended up on as Ash. At least these people were able to continue their lives. They didn't just randomly die and come back to life. Well, Tara Reid did in some of them. And movies. also, technically so not, because don't they reset the timeline at the end of this? So technically, all of the things they did didn't happen. Didn't they reset the timeline in the end game? Isn't that how people came back alive? No. They so just... they brought people back from Ash. Yeah. And they were all aware. Yeah, they were all aware that of the event. Yeah, because in, in Captain... In, um, oh, that's right. They the Winter Soldier, that, yeah, they, they, they always talk about, like, oh, the... The, the thing. I will the say the city, yeah. the city handled it better in Sharknado, though. They bonded together, the different countries and everything. China oh. became queen of England. In Marvel, they just kicked people out of their homes. <laughs> so there's more unity in Sharknado than there is in the Marvel Endgame. They care more is about there, the people. They spend most of the movie arguing about saving grandpas and, and friggin'. Would you not want to save your early. grandfather? Would you not want to see your own children? In the world of time travel, where I know it's a paradox as badly as I would want to, I would know that I can't. You're can. a liar. I'm you not You would liar. totally I'm try it. it. Okay. You are such a family person and you want to get them married and have the children. That's such a <laughs> goal in your life. You cannot look at me and tell me, oh, if I travel to the future, you would be exactly like a... Uh, uh, Back to the Future 2, where he goes and meets like his future child and everything. You're exactly what it would be like in uh, Back to the Future 2. You're Marty McFly in that time sense. Back to the Future 2 is trying to fix everything. No, they're not. They're in the future. What are they fixing? They're fucking up the well, future. Well, he's in the future in the beginning and then in the past in the end. And in the past, all he does is not crash his car. That's it. That's how he fixes his whole life. Still. They're just trying to make sure the Sharknados don't eat people. All I'm saying is, is that it's not the, it's, the issue is not about how they do the Sharknados. The issue is that every single pocket of time just feels like its own singular story. It doesn't feel connected. It feels like, yeah, they say things that try and but make that's it the same. Isn't that the but same way with Endgame? Like, they all live their own lives. It's all little pocket lives that they're bringing back together to fight the one common enemy. No. See an enemy. No, not at all. <laughs> See an enemy. <laughs> No, that's not, not at all what the plot is. The plot is, is that Thanos snapped away all these people five years ago, and now we have a way to get it back through time travel. So we're going back in time to get the Infinity Stones, bring them back here, and undo what Thanos did. That's it. That sounds Planet more simple. boring. That sounds more boring than Sharknado. Because at least you get all yeah, these because awesome it makes people. Sense, Alex, that's why it sounds this more boring sense. to you. Because it makes this sense. This makes sense to me. Oh, they go like and travel to the time. I like how I was the one that brought it up and then it ended up with you two arguing about it. <laughs> I... <laughs> See, you're, anyway, just, uh, you're just stirring the pot, Jonathan. 
And this is why I tell a lot of people that you're not as like as good of a person as people think you are. But like Jonathan's so sweet, he wouldn't do that. No, no, the man will call you out and he will stir the pot. All right, look, listen, it's been an hour. All right. So I'm, yeah. I'm doing closing do, do thoughts. Do we have any final right thoughts? Now. Um, any final thoughts? positive this thoughts? This movie is trash. Uh <laughs> All right. How I'm Googling how to mute somebody else. Um, <laughs> no. So throw no, the whole Jerome away. Throw Jerome away. A lot of the whole Jerome comedy. Away. But the reality is, though, this movie is not like this movie is not trash. Um, <laughs> this movie. I told a coworker to throw her whole son away. <laughs> All right, I'll throw you away, Jerome. <laughs> no, this movie, the like my issues with this movie are just my singular thing. Again, this is going to be just like Art Carly, where it's this is not for me. So if you were expecting me, Jerome Rett, to come on here and tell you, oh, yeah, Sharknado's great, Sharknado's fantastic, you should go by, you came to the wrong place. All right, I'm never going to say that. However, I can recognize that this movie ain't for me, but it's for other people. People love this series. People love these movies. Uh, you know, on a serious note, if you love this film, if you love these movies, good for you. I'm glad that you can find something to get enjoyment out of, especially because that's what entertainment is for. It's for entertaining. It's for having enjoyment and having a good time and having a good laugh or, or whatever it is you need at that time when you're watching your movies and content. So in that regard, I'm glad that Sharknado does that for you and is that movie for you. It's just not that for me. So that's how I feel. But again, you know, it's just not for me. Final thoughts. What about your grade? Oh, grade? Uh, I don't know. I give this like a D, you know? It's not like the worst thing I've ever seen. I have a list of the worst movies I've ever seen. And this don't even come close to hitting those, in my opinion. Uh, especially because, like, yo, on that list is something like The Last Airbender, where it's like, that movie is awful. Yeah. Because it, it's like, this movie, they like you could say what you want, you know, critics, about, like, it, it being bad or whatever. But at least this movie, it knows what it's trying to do, you know? And it accomplished its goal. You know, it, 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 it looked at itself and was like this is what we're doing and accomplished that last airbender is just fronting from start to finish and it's complete okay. trash okay we don't have time no we don't have time for, time for that i'm just saying this movie gets a d it ain't on the list of worst movies i've seen to be quite honest with you and uh am i gonna watch it again probably not but am i glad i saw it at least so i can say i've been on the sharknado train even though i jumped off of it as soon as I got on and pay for the ticket, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Said, Let me off at the first stop. <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> but this ain't your stop. I don't care. I'll get off. <laughs> it's like it's all right. I can walk. What's twelve hundred miles? <laughs> I I um, went in like I said at the beginning. I went in not expecting um, too much, especially watching the sixth one. I was like, okay, usually with sequels, we know how it goes. We know the first, maybe second is always the best, except for the case of Toy Story. Um, the third is great. The fourth is trash. I won't say that because I love Toy I'll Story. The fourth but is trash, the fourth, but it's definitely unnecessary. Yeah, it's the, very fourth, unnecessary. the fourth one, I was <laughs> bored. No, I wasn't bored, but I... Anyway, this is I've only, Toy Story I've only seen the first two of Toy Story. Uh, watch oh, really? the third and then don't watch anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I a satisfying it's, story. I hear it gets emotional and I don't care for emotion, so. That's why you watch Sharknado? Because, because if I watch <laughs> it and I don't cry, people are like, how can you not cry? You're soulless and dead. All right. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't cry when because I, I watched Toy Story three in theaters. <laughs> For podcast listeners, Alex <laughs> Alex made an obscene gesture. Um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I watched the I, I watched the third in theaters, uh, Toy Story three that is, and I didn't cry at the time, but I definitely got like emotional. Um, but anyway, uh, Sharknado. Uh, 
I thought it was fun. I really, my favorite part was seeing all the cameos. Um, I obviously, the quality of the acting and just like the graphics and everything is part of the charm, I guess you could say. And it's, it's not necessarily something that I can critique or call out because it's not meant to be Oscar worthy. So um, with that in mind, I would for qual I'm gonna give it two scores. For quality, I give it a D. For enjoyment, I give it a B because I, I I enjoyed it. So at least Jonathan knows how to just enjoy things. <laughs> um, I enjoy wait. things. I enjoy good things. Mm. <laughs> I've seen you've shown me some of the movies you're like. Mm. Just gonna leave that at that. Uh, I of course love it. I'll give it a B because yeah, it does. It is still a nonsense movie, so I can't give it a full A in good conscience. But I enjoy it. It's one of those movies that are just really meant to have fun. It's not supposed to have a deeper meaning. I mean, all the movies that are that have gotten more ridiculous, like Fast and the Furious, they went in like an old beat up car to space, and like Star Wars. They don't know how to take down evil people. Okay. When, and like in Fast the, and Furious, when they when they zoomed that one car from one building to another, they, they freaking no, had no. a nuclear bomb on the tundras. Okay. They, they, they were they being dropped the cars. They dropped the cars with parachutes attached to them from a plane. And landed perfectly, too. <laughs> I'll have you know. Did, didn't miss a beat. <laughs> It's not I, like wind exists and there's a weight to the car, so it probably would drift off course. I freaking go over like a pothole in my whole car. Like For real. the calibration's all off all of a sudden. Um but yeah, I no, this, ran over one oh sorry. You ran over a pothole? No, I ran over one of this was a long time ago when I was driving home from the science center one night and I ran over, you know, one of those things that the um the people the mechanics use to like get the like slide it's like a skateboard they use it to slide yeah. underneath the car mm -hmm. there was one of those in the middle of the freeway and i couldn't avoid it and i ran over it and messed up my whole undercarriage yeah that thing's like made of metal and steel yeah, yeah. it's like to hold a car that's and it it was costly so you're lucky you actually didn't get into a serious accident those that's really dangerous. i know Thankfully, thankfully it was late, so like there was barely anybody on the road. But then how could you not avoid it? Because it was because it was like my lights, it was so dark. Like I was in the freeway. My lights could only like see so far. So as soon as I saw it, I couldn't avoid it. It was either like go to the right and because I was like in the um like far I was in like one of the side lanes it was either like go to the left this is a whole side tangent but it was either like it was either like turn and um risk getting my like wheels you know what I mean like driving on it with my wheels or like driving over it so I drove over it and that was a bad decision but anyways my car is all good now so uh anyway I enjoyed the film and I've always enjoyed all of them. Uh, I love the writing. Uh, Sharknado's just always been something I've always enjoyed because it's one of those films I, you know, a lot of films I feel like nowadays just want to have this like deeper meaning or like make you want to think, make you want to have emotions or something. I just want to enjoy a film. I just want to have fun with it. And Sharknado is definitely one of those films. You can just have fun. You don't need to critique it as much you don't need to overthink it could have the majorest plot holes and they don't matter that much because the story is what the story is it's a tornado that happened during a hurricane that that suck up some sharks you can go anywhere with that plot and the original story was that when you start off with that you have nowhere to go but more nonsense and so when i think about other movies that they go from nonsense that were more serious like Fast and the Furious or like Star Wars or even Marvel. Like you all started at this point and then you gradually went insane. And then it's like, when you get to that end point, it's like, where, why are we here? How did we get here? But with Sharknado, you, if, if you see, you guys should watch the whole series. 
if you watch the whole series, you can see how they got to this point because that original point was already like, this is a little insane, but it's fun. I've also watched uh, his, this, the other one, Lava Angeles, where in Los Angeles, an earthquake happens and tarantulas that have been living in lava come out. There's also a sequel to that, which is like a lava to Lanchulas or something like that. Um, I'm going to make you watch that next time. I'm going to win the trivia round just to make you watch Lava Lanchulas. <laughs> Don't worry. It'll be the first one. So there's plenty of contacts. Okay. So we won't need. Okay. Well, that's to... better. Yes. That, 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 I probably would have had more enjoyment out of this movie if I had. I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Admittedly, I'm you just, don't know how to have I'm fun. just I'm just laughing at this argument of you're saying it's <laughs> it's better to just be dumb from the start than to be smart and then get no. brain damage. No, no, no. <laughs> no, my argument is if you start off with a ridiculous plot and it becomes more ridiculous, you understand how you got there and it's a fun ride. Unlike other movies, that when it starts at what is basically this normal plot, and you're like, okay, I get it, we're, we're, this is where we are, to like all of a sudden they're bringing supernatural elements, they're bringing time travel, they're bringing this. It's like those shows that all of a sudden bring in like, they, they jump the shark. This movie was already a shark on the jump. This didn't Literally have to jump, jump the, shark. the shark. Yeah, they were already in the sky with a shark. Literally. There was no need for a jump because they were already up there. It, it the the timeline and everything they went with made sense if you do watch all the films. So you guys should just watch all the films. It'll help you. It'll make you love Sharknado. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Watch all the Sharknados. Nice. On that note, we we yeah, everybody wants to love Sharknado. And on that note. We started with love. love. We started with love. We're gonna. That's a quote from Jonathan. That's gonna be on the DVD box set for Sharknado. Everybody wants to love Sharknado. Jonathan, quote the first ones to die podcast. (laughs) Jonathan Keys. Uh, Anyway, if (laughs) someone wants to send you some love, where can they find you at, Alex? Uh, you can find me at Alex and Nobody on Instagram. Uh, same for my Twitter, which I've been starting to use a little more again. Um, I also handle the TikTok account that shows little bits of the podcast at The First Ones to Die, which is also where you can find us on all our social media. As Jonathan pointed out, to come find us and give us some likes and love. Um, apparently, that's what I need in my life, uh, which is also our Twitter, Twitter handle and our Instagram and Facebook. And what about you, Jonathan? Remember yes. last of you, Jerome, because you're me. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at Jonathan Keys on Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you please. Um, Jerome, where can Thunder Levin tweet you at <laughs> and send his thoughts? Listen, Thunder Levin, let me tell you something. If you're listening to this, this is no shade to you. I'm going to treat you the same way I treat Tyler Perry. All right. I know you could do better. I know I be, I believe in you like a presidential candidate and the, you your talents are above this at this point in your life. I um, know they are. I, 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 I look play. forward to seeing whatever those talents create next. That is the next step up from this. Maybe Granted, this is an old better. movie. So, you know, who knows what Thunder Lesbian is. Maybe don't I'm do, uh, maybe don't do presidential because like, it's really hard to back everything we've had in the last few years. I mean, we got an all right president now. He's not great, but he's all right. He's better um, than what we had, but still. Uh... Anyway. But regardless, uh, you know, but if you want to contact me, find me at Not Jerome Red on Instagram. Uh, that's where I'm at. And then also at RoboZoo Media to see other things I'm working on if they ever come out. Um, <laughs> ever. See, you're, tra- you're trash talking like Thunder Lot and like you can't even post stuff on your own social media. That's all I'm going to say about it. That's because I have more dignity than that. All right. <laughs> do you though? I do. Because I have a whole. I'm Insta- telling you now. I have a whole Instagram. All the people Instagram. who would have never made a Sharknado. Hold on. It would have been me. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Because there's a whole Instagram video that I am animating at the moment of you talking about socks and segregation in socks. See, all right. But that's actually funny. Wait, what? Okay, Did I, what yeah. I this episode? Yeah. 
No, no it's an episode. This is the old Instagram just, video I, I posted. And I'm making and also, an action where he's talking Alex, about you need to love your black and white socks the same and they should go together. It's segregation and socks. That's an Instagram wrong. video. You don't see me putting that on the Sci Fi channel now, do you? You don't see me trying to ask yeah. for a million dollars you know for why? that, now, do you? You know why? Because nobody would. A million dollar nobody, idea. Nobody would pay you for sock segregation. Exactly. It's not a million dollar idea. <laughs> I was surprised Sharknado ask, ended up ask, becoming one. <laughs> ask Ask Thunder Levin how much money he made from Sharknado. Yeah. Though. So you try to bash, but like he getting that, he's getting the money. So look, all that matters is next week Space Jam and Loki. I guess <laughs> I don't know, maybe <laughs> possibly. <laughs> we'll Poss- you know, I might I might not be here. Who knows? The point is. <laughs> <laughs> like you got anything else going on in your life no too. i'm saying I, I expect to be fully murdered by the end of the month uh by alex <laughs> for this entire episode or another so, sharknado super fan yeah you know or or that's true or another sharknado super fan is probably i'm just gonna get anthrax in the mail or something it's gonna be the end so uh, don't claim it <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for listening everybody and thanks uh Another love for uh, reaching out to us, for reaching out to our Twitter. I'm super yes. excited. You, you literally made my week by doing that. Why am I so red? Yeah. I was about to ask. It's so, I need to. That's the rage like, building up. Um, after if, you, <laughs> if you want to follow I told us. a mom to get rid of her whole child. I will get rid of you, Jerome. I love you, but <laughs> if it needs to be done for Sharknado, it will be done. Go if on, Jonathan. You, if you want to follow us, hit us up at the first ones to die anywhere on social media or email us the first ones to die at gmail.com and we'll see you next week for the space jam na, 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 na. anyway bye come on and jam. Bye. Now jump into the plan. Yeah, all right.